Thank you, Lindy, and thank you to the whole Breakout Labs team. It's really uh, an honor to be here. I'm super excited. But I want to start things off on a little bit of a negative note. Um, it's called Salesforce Tower, 61 floor building not too far from here. It is literally uh, about to suck the power out of this city. It's going to be a huge load on the grid, and our technology will eliminate that problem entirely. And I'll tell you how that works in just a second. My name is Hunter McDaniel. I'm the founder and CEO of Ubiquity, which is short for Ubiquitous Quantum Dots, because that's exactly what we're going to achieve solving problems like the one I just described. So for those of you that don't know, quantum dots are these vanishingly small, tiny particles of semiconductor that have this fundamental property uh, that makes them very interesting that they can convert one spectrum of light into another with super high efficiency. And just by changing the size of these particles, we can continuously tune the color of light that they absorb and emit over a wide range. And so up here you'll see these uh, different vials of our material. We literally just change the size of the particles in those vials to make the different colors. And so we're reshaping how color and light is used with these materials today. And they're not new. What we've developed is a novel composition of matter that solves toxicity issues, stability issues, and cost issues with previous generations of quantum dots. And that lends itself to some new uh, applications. It's truly a platform technology. Quantum dots are used in displays today. Um, you can use them as security inks, healthcare applications. But what we see as the killer application for quantum dots is in using them as a window tent, a sunlight harvesting window tent. There's two reasons why you might want to do that. The big picture of the company, the vision, is that we're going to power cities, the smart cities of the future, with the glass on skyscrapers. But there's an earlier market with a faster sales cycle that's growing rapidly in greenhouses and ag tech. And so that's our first, uh, first target market. And the reason why that works uh, is basically because of the absorption of chlorophyll which is optimized, well, has, has bands of absorption in the red and the blue. Green light isn't as useful for converting into biomass by plants because of that absorption spectrum. And it's more complicated than just the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll. That's sort of summarized in the McCree curve on the right-hand side here, which is basically telling you how efficiently plants eat photons to create biomass, to create those crops, and it's peaked in the red. So red is by far the most efficient color for uh, converting into a useful crop. And so we've done some very preliminary initial studies. There's a lot of science that suggests that if we could just convert sunlight into red light, that would be beneficial. Um, this is one of those very preliminary studies on tomato plants. Um, I think the image speaks for itself. We've done everything the same except surrounding the plants with our film on the right-hand side. So this isn't a niche market. We see it as a proving ground and a first market for us. But there's, uh, it, it's growing rapidly. It, currently, it's about a $21 billion business globally, expected to double by 2025. So on the electricity generating application, it's almost the exact same uh, concept, same physics, same materials. Um, what's happening here is we've embedded this, our material in between sheets of glass. They're absorbing light in the room. You can hopefully see there's a little bit of a glow on the edge. But when I shine light on it, it'll really light up the edges. And so what's happening is the light's being converted to a glow by our material in between the sheets of glass. And then that gets guided through the glass to the edge where it couples out. And so we can put a solar cell there on the edge to harvest that luminescence into electricity. In the greenhouse application, we pipe that down on the plants. But in a, uh, in a window, we put it into solar cells. And we can make it a color neutral window as well. It doesn't have to be red. We can make it essentially gray. And that's uh, emitting in the near IR, which is more optimized anyway for those silicon solar cells on the edge of the window. Um, this isn't just a, kind of a pie in the sky idea. This is a proven uh, technology. We have support from the National Science Foundation through the SBIR program. Um, we've had support from the Department of Energy uh, through the Small Business Voucher Pilot and also an SBIR from them. And we've partnered with NREL to model the efficiency, cost, and performance of these prototypes. And we've made, uh, we actually have a record efficiency in the first ever certified solar window. Um, and this is a picture of one of the ones that we had certified here. Um, so this is obviously a huge market opportunity. Globally, flat glass is about an $80 billion business growing at about 7% a year. About 80% of glass goes into construction. If you want to think of it in terms of building integrated photovoltaics, which is mostly rooftop systems today, it's the fastest growing subsegment of solar. And solar, by the way, is booming. Uh, just last year, there was more than 100% or about 100% increase in installations in the United States. Um, just as a case study, Salesforce Tower, about 61 floors, would produce roughly a gigawatt hour of annual production or avoid about $200,000 in cost. And it's about energy independence, um, and this is enough to actually power the building at its peak demand, roughly 250 apartments. Um, so we turn that Salesforce tower not to, you know, from a load on the grid to an asset on the grid, to a power station in the city, but also integrated into the existing structures in the city. 
So our mantra is that we want to take advantage of the value chain. We don't want to disrupt it. So we're partnering with existing players and leaders in the window manufacturing and agriculture film industry. We literally add a, our, our material as a drop-in um, additive to those products to enable new functionality. That'll enable us to go to market much faster. A little bit more about the company. Uh, it's about two years, uh, three years old, founded in 2014. Uh, we've raised $1.6 million to date, including the Breakout Labs funding, which closed uh, just a couple of weeks ago. We've got 10 full-time employees. Five of those are PhDs. Uh, we're located in Los Alamos, New Mexico, because we spun out of Los Alamos National Laboratory, where I was a postdoc for three years. I have a PhD in material science and engineering, so very strong technical background in this field. Uh, we're also licensing technology exclusively from MIT, Western Washington University, and the University of Washington around the material itself, methods of manufacturing it, and the end applications. We're not pre-revenue. We'll do about half a million dollars in sales uh, this year. Um, and a ton of non-dilutive government support, as you'd imagine, uh, north of a million dollars. About $15 million has gone into developing this technology at those research institutions. Uh, 15 patents in the portfolio, four are granted. So very, very serious about our intellectual property position. The next couple of years are going to be all about product development, uh, pi pilot projects, and partnerships. We have several partnerships already. Um, can't go into uh, all the details on those, but there's a lot of traction with exactly the right people that we need to be working with, the interlayer manufacturers, the glass companies, the ag film producers, really to bring this technology to market. And then the financings will be sort of tied to those milestones that we're going through over the next couple of years. So the ask today is uh, that we're raising a round right now. It's a, a pre-Series A round, a convertible note, uh, raising $1 million really to scale up our capacity for supplying those pilot projects, to do those plant studies that I talked about, um, really strengthen our IP position um, and develop that minimum viable uh, ag product, the ag film product that I talked about. Um, all of our rounds up until the breakout labs money have been priced, and the post money valuation earlier this year was about 4.7 million, so very modest valuation, I think. Um, and if you're interested in participating in this round, come talk to me. Um, I'd be happy to show you some demos upstairs of our, uh, our, our products. Um, and really, this is gearing up for a Series A next year. In the range of $7 million, um, we'll see what the ask ends up having to be next year. But around mid-year, we hope to close that Series A. Come talk to me about that, too, if you're interested. And thank you all so much.